Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a project to share with you. We are working through our bee unit study and we are using this book called Turn This Book Into a Beehive as inspiration for today's project. Today we're going to be dissecting a flower and this is a great botany exercise that works fantastic with a bee unit study. We're using 90 pound hot press watercolor paper. This is 12 inches by 9 inches and I'm going to cut it down in half and then in half again. In, and that's going to give me the perfect size card to work on for this project. I'm using some double stick tape across the center of the card running horizontal and then I've got a bouquet of flowers here that have kind of seen better days and so we're going to try to use a couple of them in order to do this project. So I've got a sunflower and a rose and a couple other flowers. Now these are not ideal flowers for this project. I would say one that shows the different parts of the flower a little bit better would be more ideal but we decided to use what we had on hand. So we weren't able to see all the parts of a flower as well as we wanted to but we're going to do the best that we can. My daughter is taking apart this beautiful rose and I have to say that I had reservations about doing this particular project especially because of the dissection process and even though we're not dissecting an animal I think just taking apart a flower has a sense of violence that I didn't want to bring into our lessons. Now that's just my personal reservations about it. If you saw a flower that had already lost lost its petals and you were dissecting it, I think that would be different than taking apart a really nice flower. These are just my own personal reservations for this, but by all means go ahead and dissect flowers from your bouquet or from the wilderness. I think that this is a really educational project, although again, I wouldn't do this for a really young child. I think in part having reverence for uh, the things around you and God's creations, that's going to be far better than trying to take it apart in a scientific manner for young students. I think these kinds of exercises are extremely important for an older student, but I'm working with my eight-year-old daughter and my 13-year-old son. I would have preferred to do something more artistic and a little bit more beautifying for my eight-year-old daughter, whereas my 13-year-old son can easily do these things since he's at that age of wanting more scientific knowledge. It's time to do some art for this project and I've got my distress inks and we're going to be doing some water coloring and I've got those same four by six inch cards but this time it's with 140 pound cold press watercolor paper again nine inches by 12 inches so they actually come out to be about four and a half inches by six inches and I find this to be a really good size for some of these projects when we're not doing a wet on wet watercoloring technique which would require us to have a really large piece of paper I think for these small smaller projects having this smaller size had has worked really well for us and it also gives us an opportunity to do a little bit of written work on the back side of these cards although for my eight-year-old daughter it's just going to be artwork and then labeling on the front so we're going to do our rose and our sunflower and those were the two flowers that we were able to identify and dissect now, once this project was over, my 13-year-old son decided to join us. Uh, we're at an age where working together hasn't been uh, really harmonious, and so having them work separately has worked out a little bit better. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to let you listen to our live lesson and how we just communicate while we're doing a lesson. You guys for the seed? No. Mm. Well, the, the, the pollen... Like that's the pollen. The pollen is on that. The stamen holds the pollen. What we need is the stigma. The stigma in the center. Then the pollen comes from the stigma or from the stamen onto the stigma. And then it travels down into this area here and that gets fertilized. So if, if imagine this is like a, an apple blossom, this one can't fertilize this one. It has to come from a different tree. So the bee will come and put it here. Then it, it that so travels down. Yes, and that turns into the apple. So when you oh, look yeah, at- so you know the box blossom, the apple must be tiny originally. Yeah, I mean, it. well, it, there's no apple until it gets fertilized. Like the blossoms are tiny. 
Yes, the blossoms are tiny. Huge. Well, this is the part that enlarges and yeah. gets bigger. All the petals fall off. And what you're left with, if you go look at an apple, the very bottom part, yeah. that's where the flower was. Those are the little petals of the flower. And the stem, that's what's attached to. Go ahead and label them. That I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if you'd like to see some of the other projects that we've done with our bee unit study, you can tap on the screen right now. That link is down in the description box as well. You can also find a blog post that accompanies this video on my website at pepperandpine.com. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at pepperandpine.